So joining us now is David Kay, the chief investment officer and executive chairman of Liddy Capital. David, thank you very much for joining us on this exchange exclusive here. Can you please take us through, David, what exactly brought this case to your attention? You specialize in litigation finance. Why Binance? Why this case? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me on. You know, it's it's interesting. So we are the first private equity firm that is on the blockchain. Um, we're finance from the blockchain and we're focused on litigation financing. But what really got me involved in it um, was that we pledged to put five to 10 percent of every dollar we raised into nonprofit making opportunities or, or circumstances. For example, people who lost $25,000 and were scammed. And so we set up something called Scam Busters. And through our Scam Busters initiative, we got an email about this case, which was amazing. I sat down, I met with the group, and we hammered out a deal. So what, is, what exactly does a deal involve with litigation finance on your side of things? You're putting up this money, at least $5 million. What are you expecting in return? You mentioned some of these nonprofit type cases. Is this one of them, or are you expecting some kind of a cut in terms of the overall case in the event that you actually hypothetically win this? It's a good question. This is not a nonprofit case. This is a case where we're going to commit at least $5 million, and we will get 30% of any amounts that we ultimately get from Binance in exchange for financing 100% of the costs and taking 100% of the risk. Traders that were harmed who Binance has broadly ignored. There is now an option. You can come, you can sign up at financeclaim.com and you can join us. And if you join us, there is no risk. There is no out-of-pocket cost. Uh, we will represent you and, and we will have this issue, this question, this important question that is out there about how does this new kind of company, a company without regulation, without offices, without headquarters, how do consumers interact with them? Can they be held accountable? How do you expect or how do you think regulatory bodies from around the world will treat this particular case? Will it be precedent setting? Will it influence policy in key crypto trading type markets around the world? What exactly do you feel as though will be the outcome in the event that you are in some ways, maybe not wholly, but some ways successful with your case? I, I, I frankly think that that's the best case scenario for Binance. Um, you know, query whether it is better for Binance to lose or win this case. If the answer is somehow that they can avoid regulation in any jurisdiction around the globe, and then as a result, not have to face any potential compensation claims um, from customers that it hurts. I mean, Dom, the last 50 years, developed countries around the world have created a system to protect consumers, both generally and in large, complicated financial transactions. If this can't be regulated and there's no place for customers to seek recompense, I, I think what you're going to see is you're going to see regulators have to step in. That means that they won't be in a position to protect their citizens, to offer them an option. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.